Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson, with some fantastic news for you. That's right, we all saw the other day the big victory. I mean, it's kind of weird that you call it a victory because it was still $175 million that Trump had to post, but he had it in cash, as he said. <laughs> Anyways, big gangster move there, total flex. But here's the thing. There's the, the decision by Ingeron and James, because it's really a decision they made together because there doesn't seem to be a dividing line when she's going to his pool parties. And then she's on the streets dancing with Chuck Schumer. You guys have seen all my videos on this. But here's the thing. The ruling is being called seriously flawed by a guy by the name of Gregory Germain. And he is a, a professor of law at Syracuse, Syracuse University College of Law. I looked at his background here and listen to this to give you an idea. He's got a good handle on this because he practiced law for 17 years following graduation from law school um, at these different attorney firms. He was later an attorney advisor to the Honorable Renato Behege of the United States Tax Court. And then he was also in bankruptcy court. So my point is, this guy is good at asset valuation and understanding harm in business law. So back to the article from Newsweek. Judge Engeron's Trump ruling might be falling apart. An appellate court has serious concerns about the $454 million verdict in Trump's fraud case, a legal expert has said. Greg Germain, a law professor at Syracuse University in New York, told Newsweek that Trump had a strong case to challenge Judge Engeron's seriously flawed ruling that the former president must pay $454 million for overinflating the value of his assets. Monday, the first department of the Appellate Division of New York Supreme Court reduced the bond Trump had to post from $454 million to $175 million. It also gave the presumptive Republican nominee in the 2024 presidential election 10 additional days to raise the payment. Is that, so they obviously see that, whoa, this is out of bounds, $454 million and you got to post it by then, and we're going to seize your properties. Look, Jason James is going to come in. She's already filed. I mean, these people are freaking nuts, okay? And it shows that it's a political hit job. And somehow this appellate court is seeing through this, if you can believe this. If Trump raises the money, the court will put a stay on any enforcement proceedings against his assets while he appeals the fraud judgment. I believe that also means there's a stay against excluding people from the Trump administration from running their business the way they should. I think, this is uh, germane again, I think the $175 million reduction shows that the appellate court division has serious concerns about the validity of Engeron's decision. Now, he did add, I want to note this, that he believed Trump had zero chance of overturning Judge Engeron's factual findings that his financial statement was overvalued. So here's an issue. Let's just dissect this just a little bit. So Letitia James says Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million. Then... After the ruling, they're on CNN saying, well, you got to be able to get at least $240 million for it. But Trump has stated that its value was worth close to a billion. So somewhere in the middle is where that is. And so he's saying it's still overstated. It's just not what Letitia James was saying. And, you know, a lot of people do that. They say that, you know, they're, and, you know, I guess really it's worth what a buyer will pay for it. There's a lot of guessing in that. And maybe with Trump's name and the fact that it's Mar-a-Lago, he could get more than the real estate agent originally thought. I'm not going to get into all that. The bottom line is that there was a gross error in the ruling itself. Okay. Now, he said the standard for the appeals court to review factual findings is clearly erroneous which means that there was no evidence in the record to support the judge's findings. Angeron was very careful to cite the record for his factual findings. Okay, Jermaine continued. He said, so look, Angeron had all these reasons, right? Jermaine said that he believed Trump had a much stronger argument. So here's where he says Trump is winning, is to attack Angeron's conclusion that the New York Attorney General did not have to prove that anyone relied on Trump's claims to punish Trump. So he's saying even though Trump's claims were a little high, you know, the fact of the matter is that the bank was still going to go through this. So that's that's what that means. He added that the correct interpretation of New York law was to punish someone for misleading statements if someone relied on or was harmed by the information. So again, I explained this before, but I did a development. I go to the bank and I say, I believe property is going to sell for X. 
They say, I believe it's going to sell for Y. We end up meeting on some number. The bank looks at my credit. They say, look, I think this guy can pay it back. I think he's going to make this development fly and so on. And then they give me the loan. So no matter what I tell them that I think it's going to be worth, they're going to do their own due diligence. And that's what the, this judge, uh, this uh, professor of law is saying, look, who's again, worked in the court systems, worked for the courts. Okay. So they were not harmed by the information because they didn't rely on it. They did their own due diligence. He also said Angeron's method for calculating the amount of disgorgement was seriously flawed. Disgorgement case law holds that the unjust enrichment must be attri attributable solely to the wrongful conduct, the law professor said. Okay, so he's saying that this unjust enri enrichment must be attributed solely to wrongful conduct. But that's not the case here. For obvious reasons. Germain also said he believed Engeron made no attempt to determine what portion of the profit was solely due to the financial statement as opposed to other factors. See, here's the thing. Trump's actually, I, and I, I find this out as I've looked through this, they actually just own outright a lot of their properties. So they're paying their properties off early in many cases. So not only is the bank not getting harmed, the bank's getting paid back early. He continued, so Trump has some strong legal arguments to make on appeal. Unfortunately for him, I think he's so focused on denying that he did anything wrong that the strong legal arguments may be lost in his unwinnable arguments of facts. Well, here's the thing. His attorneys are going to advise him, and they're going to be zeroing in on the fact that there was not harm. That's what they're going after. I covered that in another live stream. So the attorneys are going to say, hey, look, Donald, here's what we're going to do, because we've got to fight the winnable case. And we're going to fight the winnable case that says... Nobody was harmed, okay? Whether these assets, you know, had value X and you say they had value Y, that's not the case here. I mean, and meaning that the, that it's not the winnable case, okay? Uh, the winnable case is people were not harmed in this. And this ruling is egregious. It's erroneous. It's It's just massively unjust, okay? In September 2022, New York attorney Letitia James sued Trump, his two adult sons, Donald Jr. and Eric Trump, the Trump Organization, and two firm executives. Okay, And uh, Engeron, who oversaw the trial, found that Trump inflated his assets to get more favorable business loans. But again, the banks were not harmed. Not only that, there's always debate as to what assets are worth. In late 2023 and continuing into early January, a trial was held to determine how much the former president and his associates would pay in damages. Angeron ruled it would be $454 million in penalties, including interest. So it had gone up to like 470 some. To appeal the fraud ruling, Trump had to pay the full amount of the penalty. This is not normal. His lawyers, however, said in a filing on March 21st that he would have to pay 120% of the judgment or more than $557 million to obtain the bond. As part of the ruling, okay, uh, Weiselberg and McConey were also barred from serving as officers and directors of the New York Corporation or other legal entity for three years. Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump were ordered to each pay more than $4 million and were barred for doing business in the state for more than two years. And, I, and then the question is always, who gets the money? If there was nobody harmed, what is this just some way to collect more money for the state of New York? So the former president has maintained his innocence in the case and has said it and other legal matters he faces are politically motivated. At the end of this article, interestingly enough, they asked me to rate it, whether I said it ref leaned to the left, to the right, or was fair. I believe this article was fair. It addresses all the concerns, all the real issues in the case. Really quickly, go check out my sponsor, MyPillow, with the extravaganza, mypillow.com forward slash lumberjack, $25 deals galore. Go check it out and free shipping on top of it. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.